All right, before we get into micrometers and such, I want to cover one quick thing. And that is this idea, or not the idea, but it's, it's about the kind of data that, that as aircraft mechanics we can work with. And there's different kinds. Well, first of all, we have approved data. And who approves it? FAA. Uh, the FAA approves it. And what do you suppose approved data would look like? I mean, give me an example of approved data if you can think of anything. Testing charts. The what? Testing charts. Test, testing charts? Like graphs showing tests. Like showing tests. They were performed on the part or <coughs> thereabouts. Like hmm. I think I follow you, but no. Like What's measurement specifications. Measurement specifications. I think that's kind of along the same line, Duncan. Like tor tor um, torque specs? Yeah. All right. Well, nobody's hit it so far. That's well, no, see, that's not really approved data that we're looking for for how to fix an airplane, is it? That wouldn't help me. What is a TCDS? Type certificate. Type certificate. CRT. Data sheet. What, do you remember me talking about that? Yes. Okay, that's the thing that when an airplane is made, like a Cessna 150, the Cessna 150 has a type certificate data sheet. Remember, that tells you what kind of prop, what kind of engine, what kind of wheels, what kind of brakes, what kind of, uh, you know, where the seats are, how much, what's the gross weight, what's the max speed, all this information. So that's the type certificate data sheet. That is very much FAA approved data. All right, what other kind of approved data do you think you would have as a mechanic? I cannot argue with that. That would definitely be an FAA approved data. It's the certificate that has the serial number and stuff. Um, you are correct about that. How about the maintenance manual? Well, you're going to work on an airplane. You got to have a book that tells you how to do it. You can't just go out there and start working on a book or start working, start working on an airplane and just think, well, I hope this is right. You don't run down to the local O'Reilly's and grab yourself a Shilton's manual for, or what's that, oh, Haynes, got a Haynes manual for 150 in here? <laughs> got a Haynes manual for a Cessna? Uh, so you got your, your maintenance manual, yeah. Uh, back to the TCDS, do they ever update that for planes? Yes, yeah, so when the next one's made, then, it, but they don't really go usually back into them and change them, unless there's a major change to the aircraft, so no, they're pretty much the same. Okay, so from like year to year, generally it's... Oh, from year to year, they would change. So it'll be like yeah. this serial number, this serial number. Then if they change it, it's this serial number to that. Well, what if your plane's 50 years old? Do you only, can you only use those parts that are... Yep. Even if... Okay. That's, that's it. That type certificate data sheet matches that. Now, other things will change. You can get a supplement to the type certificate with new parts. Okay, I think that's what I was going Yeah, about. and that's like that air filter I talked about is a supplement. Wheels and brakes are upgraded. You can buy this supplement. So somebody actually makes a part... And then they get an approval from the FAA to say, okay, I want people to be able to use this on that plane. They get approval and then you get a supplement. So, so yeah, there's ways around it. Okay, so we got maintenance manual. Uh, what else do you think might be in there? Operation. What's that? Operation. Op oh, very good. Okay. POH, Pilot Operating Handbook. The manual that comes with the aircraft. So, Pilot's Operating Handbook. Yes, that's a good one. I hadn't thought of that one. <coughs> All right. Airworthiness with an I. Airworthiness directives. ADs. All right, airworthiness directives. Airworthiness directives are something that are issued by the FAA. And technically, well, not technically, they are. They're federal law when they come out because they're actually um, an amendment to FAR 39, if I remember is correct. And what that is, if you're familiar with recalls on a car, right? Yeah. We don't do recalls on aircraft. You issue an airworthiness directive. So what happens is, let's say there's a problem out there and the manufacturer sees a problem. Um, like, for example, um, there's a, a gear on the back of light combing engines and it only has one bolt that holds it on. And mechanics were not installing this bolt correctly, this, this, the gear and the bolt correctly. The gear was working loose and when that gear came loose, the whole drivetrain in the back quit and the engine would just quit. So 
the manufacturer realizes the problem, so they'll issue a service bulletin, which can be um, approved. And the service bulletin is, is kind of like an advisory to us mechanics. Hey, there's this problem. Please don't mess this up. This is the right way to do it. I want to draw attention to this. And that's what they do. And then if enough people or enough problem, if there's enough problem out there, the FAA gets involved and says, no, we're going to issue an airworthiness directive. Because some people can say, well, I don't have to do a service bulletin. It's not a big deal. But when an airworthiness directive comes out, then it could have something that says, this applies to these aircraft and you must do it right now. Or it'll, it'll explain things. So that's an airworthiness directive. So that's approved data. So there's various types. Um, we can go with that list for now. And then there's acceptable. That's one step below. It's not approved. Date, data, date. It's acceptable. See the difference? All right, so acceptable. What, what is acceptable data? Well, you work on an aircraft like this little uh, Aronka right there, a Piper Cub, a little Cessna 140. You have a Cessna 140? How, is, how thick is your maintenance manual? <laughs> there you go. What may eh, about that thick? Maybe about 20 pages, 50 at best on some of these old planes. Eh, it's like that. And you have what, which other plane? A Bonanza? No, 182. 182. Okay, so he's got a Cessna 182. How thick is your Cessna 182 manual? There we go. The only difference is really the year of the airplane. 140s are, are smaller, true, but yeah, it's still single engine. So by the time you got to a Cessna 180 more modern aircraft, the books are out about that thick. And then the 140 is like that. So the problem is there's not a lot of information if you're going to work on a on an old plane like that. Uh, it had some very basic stuff, you know, how to service the landing gear, uh, maybe had uh, control surface movements, maybe not, because you can get that out from type certificate data sheet. So you poke a hole in the fabric. How are you going to fix it? So you go to the fabric section. Doesn't say anything. All right, so he's got a Cessna 140. has fabric wings and a metal fuselage. Unless you have an A model. Right, you have the good type, right? Okay, so... Poke a hole in the, the, the metal skin. Why well, do you want to fix that? So you go to the repair section. Well, lo and behold, it says absolutely nothing about how to fix the fabric, and it says nothing about how to fix the hole in the fuselage. You're kind of stuck. It just, there's very little information. So the FAA helps us out. So they wrote a book for us called AC, and AC stands for Advisory Circular. So anytime you see AC, it uh, stands for Advisory Circular. So AC 43.13. Um, dash 1B, and there's also 2B including your book. And the name of that book is called Acceptable Methods, Practices, and Techniques. You guys ever seen this book? No. no? Yeah. Looks just like that. It's part of your reading. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so AC4. So is it approved data then, AC4313? <laughs> it's acceptable. So if the manufacturer is silent and doesn't give me any help, and I got to know something, I can go to this 4313 as a mechanic and I can open it up and I can then look at that and say, okay, this, this is my guidance and I can do it in accordance with that. And the FAA comes out and says, how'd you do it? You know, did you follow the manual? Well, not the maintenance manual because it didn't say anything, but I used 4313. All right then. Now, is it IA? I'm an IA. What's IA? Special authorization. Is it? I can actually use acceptable data and as an IA and it says it on page one there's a lot of neat information on page one I always read page one FA stuff that says uh, paraphrasing that basically I can approve that data as an IA so that's a power that I have but being an IA to use that for major alterations and repairs so but as far as for an AMP it's always considered acceptable data so that's like the best example of acceptable data and then I don't want to say not acceptable data but I'm just going to say uh, other, because if I said unacceptable, that you think what? But it's not approved. It's not acceptable. It's like less than all of these. And what do you think that might be? Sorry. Now, what is AC 8083-30 alpha? It's your textbook. <coughs> All right, so what happens if I'm doing something and uh, I'll use a textbook. I mean, it's, an a, it's AC. What's it stand for? Who, so who wrote it? FAA. FAA. So I'm going to go, hey, can I use that? 
Nobody wants to speak up. I would say, no way. <laughs> you better not. That is just a textbook. You can't use textbooks. You can't use little. Now, um, I talked about a little handbook. I showed you a little picture. It's got some neat stuff in there. Um, like there's a torque chart in there. Um, but that falls under this. It's just other. It just so happens that the torque chart is taken right out of 4313. So is it acceptable? Then it's acceptable. But let me give you an example of kind of the problem that you can run into with this. So <clears throat> let's say, because right, we're, we're, 140 is kind of my favorite airplane, working on a Cessna 140 and it's damaged to the metal skin. So I got to cut a little hole and put a patch on it, right? So I go to the uh, repair manual for the Cessna 140 and it doesn't say anything. So what am I going to do next? Okay, I'm going to go to something acceptable. So I go to 4313 and I go to the section on sheet metal repair and I can see a sheet metal repair and I follow the rules and laws. I'm like, okay, I've got my sheet metal repair. I got it all patched. I got it all figured out. Um, it shows me the size. It shows me the number of rivets. And I'm going to use 330 second rivets because it tells me how to do that. And um, so I get ready to make my patch. But you know what's funny is the maintenance manual didn't tell me what size to hold a drill for my rivets. And 4313 didn't say it, but it kind of referenced something. Um, so I'll do it like this. All right. So the maintenance manual, whatever plane it is, maintenance manual. Maintenance manual. So I have a sheet metal skin repair. So I go to the maintenance manual. It tells me, oh, I've got to make a patch so big. I've got to use so many rivets. I've got to space them accordingly. That's a terrible looking patch. And it tells me I should use three 30 second rivets. And I'm like, oh, I can do that. But you know what? It didn't tell me what size hole to drill for those rivets. So what am I going to do? I got a choice. Just drill a hole that the rivet fits in. You guys know what a rivet is? Yeah. That's okay if you don't. So rivet is a, uh, it's an aluminum thing that <coughs> I, okay. Dirty little secret, I am a terrible drawer. Um, it's got a head on it, round head usually. It's got a shank on it. And what happens is you put some sheet metal in here and then you actually bucket, you, um, you have a little hammer that hammers on the head and then a piece of steel on the bottom that actually drives this until it kind of looks like this. So it squishes that all together and then this goes away right there. Follow? Okay, so I know how I'm gonna do it. But I don't know what size hole I'm going to drill in this metal. So the maintenance manual doesn't tell me. So where am I going to go to? What's that? Acceptable data. Acceptable data. Okay, so I go to acceptable. If I go to 4313, I am going to read that. And there's a section in there that tells me hole sizes to drill. Reference. MIL HDVK5. Very little sentence, kind of an obscure thing hidden in there. All right, so I got to go look up this. It stands for Mill Handbook Five. So I go, I look up Mill Handbook Five, and I find out it says, oh, if you're going to drill a three thirty seconds inch rivet, you should use your forty number forty one drill bit. If you're going to do an eighth inch rivet, well, you should be using a number thirty drill bit. And if you're going to do a, a five thirty second rivet, these are all the diameters. Well, you should be using a number twenty one rivet. Am I good to go? All right, that's pretty good right there. But I'll tell you what, if you were to read your book, uh, AC, what's it, 808330 Alpha, it's got a chart too. It says if you're doing a 332nd, you should use a number 40. Eighth inch, you should use a 30. And 532nd, you should use a 20. What do you think about that? No. All right. I bring this up for a reason. It's not acceptable, but here's the deal. When I went through A&P school, that was the size drill that I was taught to use. And AC has changed since then, so it, uh, I don't even think it referenced Mill Handbook back then. <coughs> so we use number 40. It's the way I was taught to do it. When I went out to work in the field, that's the way the field did it. I ended up working with a guy who came from the Air Force who was a genius at sheet metal. That's the number he used. Come back to the school. That's the number that they ordered for the tool room. And it's the number that's in your 
book. So I tell you that to say that even though 43.13 says, the, the, the maintenance manual doesn't say anything, and 43.13 does say 41, this is the way it's done out in the field, number 40, right? So that's pretty much the way that we should be doing it. So if anybody says anything, I mean, now you know, but we're going to use a 40, right? What do you mean? What's that? You arguing with me? <laughs> but I'm being serious about this. This is no joke. This is the way it is. So can we agree that at number 40 be okay without? No. Now he's going to give me some lip. I'm on it. You're on it, however. However what? You, you, you're, you're, you're like this over there, right? You're, you're ready to say something. What were you going to say? No, I was going to ask you a question. I just actually what was that? Uh, is that for a specific sheet of metal or it depends on the thickness? And well, the, number, the size rivet used depends on the thickness. That's a whole other thing. But if you're using a 332nd, the industry standard is number 40. Yes, and, and I'll be honest with you, I get into arguments often about this number 41 thing. I'm like, well, actually, the right answer is number 41. And you know what I'm told? No. You're wrong. Well, why am I wrong? <laughs> look it up. The textbook clearly shows, you guys have a textbook, you could look it up yourself. The textbook clearly shows it's a 40. So am I right or am I wrong? So do you have to get oh, air directors? Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> most current ones are others. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you be the jury. Alright, I like that answer. So what's the most acceptable data? So you're going to make me stick with Mill Handbook 5? And what's Mill Handbook 5 say? 41. Huh? And wouldn't that be more current? Yes, but out in the field, everybody's going to say 40. And you told me another story I think, a couple days ago, I think, about something else similar to that. There's a hierarchy with You guys are kind of hardcore. <laughs> so what if that's the only drill bit we ordered for across the street when we do these projects? You better figure it out. <laughs> Somebody else needs to sign. Drill yeah. bits are not that expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Duncan spoke up first. You get the medal. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't have gold, it's silver, and I want my paper clips back. <laughs> it's actually occurred to me last night. This is all true. This is 100% accurate. It's 100% true. Everything I said was no exaggeration, no lie. Um, it is exactly the way it is. This data is correct. The argument I have is correct. I wanted to throw this out here, and, and actually, I probably did a bad job, but I wanted to present it to you as though the reality and see what your reaction was going to be. Uh, clearly, this class will not put up with it. You've obviously learned the right thing. What, <laughs> because what is right? 41. This is why I love aviation, because it's not ambiguous. It's so not ambiguous. That's so the word. What if Well, the, if you, and I don't have the data with me, if you look at the size difference between a 40 and a 41, it is almost negligible. And so that's the argument you're going to get. Okay, so maybe you are right. Maybe it is a 41, but look at the difference. It's like, you know, I, in tens of thousands of an inch or something. It's just some stupid or, or thousands or less. Have, they could also argue if you would have used a 41, the plane wouldn't have crashed and people wouldn't have died. Even though it's that small of a difference, they could say, well, should have used the right one. Good. I, 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 I mean, we can wood it all day, but. Okay, so we can go back to the fact that the four, for some reason, and I think that according to like Mill Handbook, one, two, three, or four, and I haven't researched that, maybe it was a 40. At one point, I believe in my heart that it was a 40. 
And then Mill Handbook 5 changed it and nobody read Mill Handbook 5. You know how many people out there in this industry actually know what Mill Handbook 5 is or read that little sentence? In this industry, in the world, people are just, they read across, they go, M-I-L-H-D-B-K-5, I don't know what that is. Anyway, and they just kind of move on. But to stop, and oh, when you read that, it's an engineering book. Do you have any engineers in here? Okay, I can barely grasp most of it, but I can grasp the size of rivets. But, uh, but anyway, um, so really, I do think that 40 was the standard for a very long time. For some reason, they changed it. Who knows was some, why? But my philosophy is right is right, wrong is wrong. Somebody, if, if 4313 tells me to reference Mill Handbook 5, Mill Handbook 5 says 41, guess what I'm going to use? 41. And I will spread the word, hey, by the way, you should be using a 41, and I'm going to get feedback every time I say it, because I have yet to have one person go, you know what? I've always wondered about that. Um, what do you guys use at work? <laughs> so, yeah. So, are we supposed to keep up on, like, material like that? Because what did he do reference? That's a whole no. Because if you're if you open up forty three thirteen and you're doing a repair in accordance with that and you want to drill the hole according to that, then you got to use the latest stuff, and you have to know. You have to know. Uh, since I've been in the industry, forty three thirteen has been changed once. Oh. <laughs> they don't change it very often. All right, good job, guys. I'm I'm impressed. Katie, you ready? All right, most of you have already figured out how to read the micrometer. Can everybody see this okay? All right, but I'm going to go over it just so we have a, a record of it. And refresh your memory. If I can figure out where I want to go here. All right, so here we have a micrometer. <clears throat> And we'll note all the little nuances of the micrometer and the things that we should be using correctly. Laser pointer. There we go. Uh, all right. Thankfully, it's all I got words on here. Uh, I'm not a. Well, never mind. Sometimes I don't worry so much about the nomenclature. All right. But on these the, an, the anvils, they do have carbide tip faces. They're very hard. They're there to resist wear. You have to be careful not to scratch parts with them because it's harder than using them the parts that you're dealing with. You do have the frame, and notice this says a heat insulated handle because as these things heat and cool, they actually can spread open and close a little bit. So this particular one is a zero to one micrometer. And when it is all the way closed, these two tips touching each other, this should read zero. That's one way you can check the accuracy. Um, the other way is, check it on this end, then you open it all the way up and use what's called a standard. It's an, an exact one inch block that has been calibrated and certified one inch, and you put it in here, and then this should read one inch at the other end. All right, so you always want to check that. Um, we have, on this end, an important part. It is the ratchet. The thing about a ratchet is, it is there to tell you when to stop turning. This one doesn't click. Too bad. It is all right. Got me a click. All right. So it's there to tell you when you have done it enough. Because if you don't and you're just twisting like this, you actually force this together and spreads it out. So now if I take this and force it and then I do this, what do you think is gonna happen? Well it's already been over tightened and forced. So what's this gonna do? Nothing. Okay, so don't yeah. tighten it here too much and then do that because that's just ridiculous. All right, so what you're supposed to do is use this, bring it up gently until it clicks. And what that does is it gives you repeatability. You're doing the exact same proper tightness time after time after time. And then when you get really good at it, you'll, you can use uh, without it, but uh, it's designed to be used, so use it. So, um, but you have to be careful. I'll, I'll get into some other stuff. So use the ratchet appropriately. You tighten with the ratchet, not this, and then do that because it's already tight. So that's going to always click. Um, we have, what else are we going to go to here? We have the thimble. Now, don't look at that as metric. It'll mess you up. <coughs> the thimble, which is this part right here that goes round and round, 
this part here that goes round and round, the part that goes round and round, represents one thousandths of an inch. We have a question. Yes. Any time in this class are you using digital ones or is that too, too easy? I don't want to say it's too easy. You will not be using digital. And the reason why you will not be using digital is because at some point you're going to go have to take a test with a mechanic examiner. And when you get to the mechanic examiner, we want you to be using the most difficult equipment possible so that nothing will shock you. You will get something like this and you go, oh, well, I only know how to use a digital. And guess how well that's going to go on your test that day. <laughs> As a mechanic examiner, I would probably have to say something like, well, that's a shame. Thank you for paying your fee. Now go home and study up how to use this and come back and retest when you figured it out. So, so as an A&P, you got to be able to use both. So, all right. It's always somebody looking for the easy way out. All right, so it represents one thousandths of an inch. Oh, dab. All right, so one thousandths of an inch is how much? Point zero zero one. All right, so this represents point zero zero one of an inch. It goes from zero all the way around to 25. So the little thimble starts over here at zero. So if this were a micrometer and it were all the way closed, see this line right here? Okay, all the way closed, I'm gonna read off that line. All the way closed, I would see zero, zero. Now I like to say that micrometers have a personality. Every single micrometer has a personality. And that's one of the reasons why you're not turning in your micrometers at night. Because I found that every time you turn them in and you get a new set, it has a different personality and you have to relearn a micrometer. So a lot of times when I'm working with you, I pick up your, you'll see me messing with it a little bit, I'm figuring out its personality. And by that, I mean that sometimes when you look at a micrometer, they're perfect. And you will see half of this little black line when it's on zero. And you're like, all right. Sometimes you'll see the whole black line and a little bit of space when it's on zero. And sometimes you won't see that line at all. But it's still zero. Got it? All right, so that's what I mean by personality. They can be just a little little off on there. But in a perfect world, I would see half of that line going this way, lined up on zero when it's totally closed, right? Now this has 40 threads per inch, which means it will go around 40 times in one inch. And that just happens to work out that it'll go around um, a perfect amount of times to give us the reading. So as I go around, the thimble represents one thousandths of an inch. So I come to right here, and I have one line. So that's how much? One thousandths of an inch. I go to two. How much is that? Two thousandths, three, four, five. And of course, as I'm doing this on a real micrometer, it's going to be screwing out and getting further away from the zero. Right? That's where things are going to get tricky. So we'll start making a little bit harder. So it comes around. What's the highest number this goes to? Who said 24? Yeah, it's technically correct. All right, so it goes to 20. So how much is this right here? 23. Well, there's the zero. So that'd be 24, 0.024 right there. Everybody follow? Okay. But I go just a little bit more, and that's 25, 0.025. So that thimble is going to go tell me kind of that. And so if I go all the way around once, I have 0.025. All right. Now, when 025 shows up, I should have a little line right here. That little line right there. So that's, and every time it comes around, it's another 025. So you go from 0 to 0 0.025, 0 0.050, 0 0.075, 0 and then 0 0.1. All right. Let's back it up a little bit. So in a perfect world, when I come around to 0, I should see a little half a line like that, right? Anybody see that? Perfect world. Sometimes the world isn't perfect. Maybe I don't see that line. So how do I know that it's still 0 0.025? The zero I got all that space there. That space had to come from somewhere, so that must mean that it went around one time, right? All right, so it went around one time, even if I don't see that little line, this means it has a bad personality. So maybe I see a little bit of a line, maybe I see a little bit more of a line. The point is, you have to be smarter than the micrometer and realize that it's gone around one time at 0 0.025. All right, so now what happens if I come over here like this and uh, it's looking like that? 
So what do I have? Now me being me, this is one of the things that uh, don't be afraid. I don't want to say cheat, but I'm going to say cheat. Don't be afraid to cheat in the right way. We're aircraft mechanics. We have to be right. We cannot make mistakes, correct? Yeah. So that means that don't be afraid to use a calculator. Don't be afraid to use a piece of paper. Don't be afraid to use whatever tools are at your disposal to get the right answer. So if it's too difficult for you to say, OK, it's 25 plus 7, and keep in math in your head, then don't. I don't. When I work on uh, engines, I have a little scratch paper next to me all the time. I just write it down. 0 0.025, right? Because we got 025, 0 0.007, do the math. And then, you know, if you have to use a calculator, I don't care. You know, what is that right there? 752, carry the one. You got 3.032. Point, point, point OK, use a calculator if you want. It's fine with me. It's what they're there for, right? Um, Units of experience. The more you use this, the more you can do the math in your head, but always be right. That's the number one issue. Be right. Uh, okay, so we got uh, 032. All right, so uh, let, me, let, me, let me make something kind of hard for you here, see if you're kind of paying attention. Okay, how much is that? Okay, always start. I'm going to do the math just like I did before, so I'm going to do it. So, what, what do I have here? Zero. All right, you want to go with that? I'm going to listen to you guys for a minute here. Okay, so I'm going to go point zero five zero, and then how many on here? Point zero two four. All right. So we got four seven zero seven four. No. Oh, All right, remember what I told you? You see how you've seen that little zero right there? You've seen that line? You can't count that line because what is that? How much is that right there? How much is that? That's 0 .050 right there. You guys added a whole 0.24 to this thing. Or, oh, 0 .5, 0 0.25 actually. See, the personality can't count that yet because what really happened is it's coming around up to that zero and then you're going to count that right yes. so in order for us to have been right a minute ago we're at zero five zero plus that 24 it should have been all the way over here and just about ready to hit the seven five see because it was zero seven four which means it's just a thousandths away from oh seven five question um, you so always like the lines have to match exactly. No, what I'm telling you is the lines don't always match. No, but I meant like the line this way on the wall has to match the sleeve line. Uh, uh, uh. What I'm telling you is be very careful. Just because you see a line doesn't mean you can count it. Okay. You have to consider the space between. See, I back here, I put it like that on 24. The real answer is 25 plus the, plus the 24. What, if I move it that much? Now it's 25 and 50. Okay, because that's you have to Yeah. Test zero would be 50. Yep, it's got to be just because you can see the line. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean that that's 50. Right, okay. because if that were true and that was 50 plus uh, yeah. 24 for 74, then, then what is that? Well, the answer here is 51. But a minute ago, you said 74. So how did it go from adding two thousandths of an inch going 74 to 51? See how wrong 74 was? It's very wrong. Always look at your space and think about it. Has it gone all the way around? Is it just ready to roll up to the zero? Or has it already gone around? Everybody follow me on that? I'm sorry, I'm blocking you guys over here. OK, everybody follow? Because that's where you, that's, if you can get that, you're like, you're, you're most, most of the way there. OK. Let's try something else here. So we got to get on this side of things. And now we're going to do. Is that 49? Let's do that. Now, what do we got? 
Yeah. Okay, let's let's uh, we'll do it. We'll do it for the for the guys like me. We're a little bit slower. Okay, what's my first thing? Point one. Okay, point one. I can put all the zeros if I want. Doesn't mean anything. Now what? Now how many point two fives do I have? Two. Two of them. Okay, so I could do point two five, point two five, but. You know, I'm okay. I can do 0 .050 on a piece of paper. So 0 .050 is correct. Now, how many thousandths do I have? Seven. Okay, you are correct. 0 .007. So I have 0 .157. Is that right? Yeah. Good job. Okay. So everybody's following me so far. Yeah. Uh, we'll just take it up one more notch. Actually, if you can understand the whole concept of it. What I did before with the 24 and the line, that's really the hardest thing. But let's do, uh, we'll bring it over here, and we're going to say, we're going to do that one right there. Now what do we have? Okay, so what's my first number? Uh, one. Don't say one. Point one. Okay. 0, 0.75. Then what? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, we're just going to work on this part right here. 0, 0, 0.05? Okay. Now, can I just leave it at that? No. Okay. We're aircraft mechanics. We don't leave it at that because it's not 0, 0. It's not um, ending in 5. Right? Everybody can see that because this is 5. That is not five. Yeah. All right. So should I round up or round down? No, no, no. I'm not rounding anywhere. I'm an aircraft mechanic. It's a guesstimation. If you want to work on, I can't think of something derogatory to work on. If you want to be a a, a, a portable toilet mechanic, <laughs> then I guess you can round because they're made out of plastic and it's okay, right? But we're talking exact stuff here. So if this is all of the information that you have then I say, this is me, I don't read it anywhere, um, then you make your best guess. And that's exactly the way I do it. And what is your best guess of that right there? Okay, Duncan says it's a little below half. What do you want to call it? Well, you're just wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> is he, I don't know if he's right or wrong. It's his judgment. I can't, you know. My judgment is standing right next to it. Oh, you said three? He says two. I'd say three to four. You know, and if you're doing this, and, and if he, and if uh, Duncan would have wrote down two, and I would look at that, I'd say, oh, it's his call. I'll go with it. All right. Um, so you just have to make a judgment call, right? And about where you think it is. So uh, we're gonna go with Duncan over there because he was the guy wearing the gold, uh, the silver medal. And uh, what did he say? She so said two. Yeah. Okay. So point zero 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 two. All right, so you make your best guess, and then we could all that up. Yeah? So between the five and the six, how many lines? Like, what's the number? Ten. There's ten of them. So. That's what the Vernier scale Well, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so without it, you'd go, okay, well, that's point zero 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 one. 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 5, 0, 0, 6, 7, okay, 8, so 9. Ten yeah, you pretend like there's ten know. little. Okay. okay, but I don't always have to pretend because sometimes they're really there. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody I broke that. They're really there, and that's what this is. This yeah. is called the veneer scale. Now I haven't moved that other than drop it. So, um, it's right where Duncan said it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm not now. I don't care what these numbers say. I need care what these numbers say. All right, and what I'm going to do is look at which one of these lines lines up with something here. What lines up on there? The four? four. The four. And you know what? This thing is surprisingly accurate. I don't know who made it, but my hand, you know, props to them because this thing is pretty, pretty uh, well done. So this four lines up with that. So that means that, sorry, Duncan, you were wrong. It's zero, zero, four. So if there's no veneer, <laughs> If there's no veneer, you have to make your best guess. Give me your metal back. So, I think I licked that clean for you at lunchtime. It didn't. I actually used a napkin just to, not to gross you out. All right. So you have. So if you have a veneer, you use the veneer. If you don't, you just do your best guess. 
don't round up, don't round down, make your best guess. But if there's a veneer and you don't make your best guess, you do it. All right? All the way out. So, 10, so this, in this case, it's four. Four ten thousandths of an inch. Yes? It's one, zero, one, one, zero. One, seven, one, zero, eight, zero, yep. four. Yep, one, zero, eight, zero, four. Yep, so we did it all. Oops. Four, zero, carry the one, eight, one. All right. So point one eight oh four. And that just takes practice. All right. In in practicality, there's some things that you wanna that's slanty. You wanna be careful of. So when you're making your measurements, I got a crankshaft. I'm actually gonna take a lot of measurements and really experiment with it. But what I'm asking you guys to do is rather simple. And that is you're gonna measure a journal. So we have the main journals and the rod journals and I've explained them in your worksheet what you're gonna do. Now notice there's an oil hole right here. Don't measure the oil hole. Don't measure inside because you get the stuck in there. Don't measure next to the oil hole, measure off of the oil hole. And I like to measure right in the center of that journal, up and down. So I'll do this one up here. So what I'm going to do, and I usually do it facing me, is I'll bring it in. And notice you use the clutch. And kind of rock it up and down a little bit. Because I really could get it this. Can you everybody see how crooked that is? Yeah. I'll do it this way. I'll do it backwards. Do you think that's a proper measurement? No, but yet listen. Is the clutch working? So I see people, this is exaggeration, but it's, you might as well do that. And then you go, okay, and you read it. Well, that's really big. Yeah, I think it is. So you want to bring it on there. And yeah, I'm doing backwards for your benefit. So normally I'd be staying on that side. And I, I rock it up and down just a little bit until I can feel it's nice and flat in there. And nice and gentle. Okay, don't, uh, you know, you see people just, I'm like, okay, I think you're done. Um, <laughs> couple of clicks. That What's that? You can make it tighter. By you really can, yeah. And, I, and, and that's the thing that bugs me when I go to the gas station, you hear people with their, with their gas, and they just keep doing it. I'm like, okay, once is enough. All right, lock it. There's a little lock on here. Some of them have a, a swivel lock, mm -hmm. and some of them have a rotating lock, and some of them have locks that don't do anything. Um, okay, now, when I take it off, I'm actually gonna look at my thimble and the numbers. I'm gonna watch it so it doesn't move, and I'm going to take it off very carefully and feel it. I'm evaluating the pull as I come off. It should be a nice little drag coming off, not rocking, not sloppy. And then carefully, I'm going to take it and I'm going to and I'm going to read my numbers on here. All right. And so I've taken one and well, I don't normally do it this way. I take it one. I'm going to go back to where the hole is. So you want to take two measurements: one here, say like one here, and then one here. Ninety degrees apart. And so I'm going to take two measurements. Uh, Every time I do this, I hate myself for doing it. Let's see what happens. Silence, why figure this out? There we go. Up is back, back is front, forward is back, autofocus. Yeah. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. It's a little upside down, sorry, let's try it again. Maybe right side up would be a better way to go. Okay, so what do you, do you, can you guys see that? Or is it too low? So we've got eight. Except she's filming. I wonder how that's working out for the camera. Okay. All right. Um, try that again. Okay, so we got 
Eight, sorry, it's a little low. Eight, we got, I can see three lines. Do I count that third line? No. No, no because it, is, it hasn't even come to the 20 yet. Yeah. It's starting to appear. So it's point eight, five zero plus 15, 16, 17, 18. So you can't see what I'm writing over here. Well, let me see. My clean board. Point. I'll blame that on Hannah. She's not here. All right. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> My whiteboard. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Point eight. I don't know if you can see it. Point five zero. <laughs> Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, point zero one eight. The zero is up on 15, 16, 17, 18. This 19 hasn't hit yet. It's a little bit before the 19th. So I'm going to go point zero, 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 0009. Now I could, uh, I could pull out my veneer on here and probably look at it, and I would see that, oh, the 9 does in fact line up on this. So it is 9. Yeah. Hang on here. I think it was depending on the light. This is harder than you think. Five, six, seven, eight. There's the nine. Well, it doesn't work that way, but <laughs> that's the closest one. So, yeah, it might be nine and a half. So, we got nine. So, that's what we got on there. So, let's see. Let's add it all up. So, uh, we got nine, eight, six. Okay, point eight six eight nine. One point eight six because I'm using a one to two micrometer. Okay, so I did it in one plane. Now I got to do it in another plane. All right, so I put this on here. I do that. Bring it back over here. Let's hope it's different. Let's see. Too shiny. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So we got. Is it any different? Yeah, it's a tenth smaller. Point eight. Got fifty. We got um, eighteen. Eighteen again. Instead of point nine, we're at what point? Let's say it's point zero 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 seven, so seven ten thousandths difference. All right, so let me see. So we got the first time one uh, one point eight six eight nine, and the next time we got one point eight six eight seven. All right, are those the same numbers? Okay. So subtract them, I get a difference of 0 0.0002. All right, that is called the out of round. This number here is the out of round, O-O-R. That is the difference between the two. That means it's not perfectly round. All right, now, because this crankshaft is going to wear smaller, I'm most concerned with the worst number. What's the worst number? That is the smallest. So on my sheet, as a mechanic, really, in the field, when I'm doing a crankshaft report, I was, I'm going to put, and that was the rear main, I put rear main equals 1.8687. That is my measurement I'm going with. And then I'm going to say out of round equals plus 0 .0002. Now, I get hit by a bus. I... Um, forget who I am or something, and somebody's got to take over my job. Everybody in my shop knew they could come in and go, 
Kevin wrote 1.8687. That's the worst measurement he found on there. That's the smallest. And they're going to look at the, the book, the maintenance manual, and they're going to cross-check that and say, is this acceptable or not? Is it within new limits or is it serviceable limits? And they go, okay, so they're going to make their evaluation off of that because that's the worst. And then it also says in the manual, it has a max out of round. And they're going to look at it and go, well, the out of round is 0, 0002. What's this plus mean? That it went up. Okay, so anybody who wants to know, it got bigger going that way. Because if I didn't write that, somebody could come along and go, well, it's 1.8678. So the out of round, did the out of round mean that it went 1.8675 or did it go to 9? But I put a plus there. So now you know what that means, right? What's that mean? And then it went up to nine. Follow? Everybody's going, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah? Couldn't you write the one, eight, six, eight, nine, and then below it, minus, and then point zero, 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 zero? I could, but I don't want to. Because when I look at the manual, let's say the manual said max service limit. I'm looking at the manual. It says the, the smallest this can be, the worst it could be, is 1.86. Eight, five. Um, you need to know, did it meet it or not? Or I'll take that back. Let's say it was 1.8687. That's the worst it could be. But in my book, I wrote over here 9, and then I wrote 002. Now you got to start doing the math. Okay. See, how you want the worst number, because that's the number that you're trying to reference in the book. You don't want to write the best number, then have to subtract it again to come up with the worst number. Yeah. For a cylinder, you need to put minus 00, zero right? Because you so he's right. This wears smaller. What about a cylinder? Absolutely. We'll talk about those after the break. They wear bigger, so I'm going to do the opposite. So it is break time. So we're going to take a break and come back. <laughs>